Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here to talk some mountain weather. So the first of three fronts has dropped snow in Alberta around the Banff area, Lake Louise. We'll look at some of those cameras coming up in a minute. The other two fronts, though, will be more significant for the lower 48. And with both, like I said yesterday, the rain snow line is going to start high, but it will progressively come down. And the timeline for all this, 1024 to 1029. The primary wave that will drive snow in the Wasatch is on 1026. Everything outside of that's pretty minor. Um, in Colorado, we're going to get a small wave on 1026, central to northern mountains. And then the bigger wave for Colorado doesn't arrive until 1028, 1029. That's when the barn door flies open and most of the cold air will come into Colorado. So it's really a waiting game for Colorado on down the road. All right, so I talked about that snow in Banff. This is kicking horse. This is kicking horse first, and then we'll go to Banff. Um, they've reported snow most of last night and today on and off, looking really good up there. Um, let me show you what it looks like in the Banff area, Lake Louise. Still snowing there. Ptarmigan uh, camera here. Uh, it just looks spectacular. And it's been snowing on and off most of the day. So again, this first front, trying to drive the pattern south, affected Alberta significantly. The last two will drive even further to the south through the Intermountain West. Those are the two to watch out for in the uh, lower 48. All right, so let me um, start off with this and show you the pattern. Big low to anchor the whole thing out in the Pacific. You can see it. It's large. Here's this other low. It's smaller. And it's racing through. Now, what's going to happen is, so the pattern looks something like this. Amplified and then a trough. So this low is going to stay put out here. It's going to stay put, but it will drive the pattern and keep the energy dropping down out of Canada. And that's where these lows are going to move through the Pacific Northwest and then drop down into the uh, Intermountain West. So the last two will come from that direction. That's how it's going to play out. I wrote about it. Um, I've updated this a couple of times to the afternoon today, but on my blog, ChrisTomer.com, I'm talking about uh, two cold fronts and um, the western snow. I had some of the cameras earlier this morning from the Lake Louise area. I looked at the timeline for where the impacts will be, and I did the rain snow line again today. I had it yesterday, updated the numbers for today, and again, it's a waiting game. You can see in the Wasatch here, um, snow levels are very high today and tomorrow, but then they drop significantly on the 26, 27, 28, 29, all the way down to 4,100. Um, so basically down to the valley level, the valley floor in many places. Um, Teton range warm the next couple of days, but then look at that 10, 26, 27, 20, 29, all the way down. Um, Central mountains of Colorado, exceptionally warm through the 27th. 13,000, 14,000 foot freezing levels. And then they come way down, all the way to Denver by Sunday. All the way to Denver. Uh, forecast radar satellites on there. I'll show it to you right here. I'll take it full. Um, so here we are by tomorrow morning at 6. Here comes storm number 2. By tomorrow afternoon, got snow moving through Montana, Idaho, into the Tetons, out of the Pacific Northwest. Uh, you can see it moving into the Wasatch right there. Now here's the prime time on the 26th for the Wasatch. This is when we're going to drive and accumulate most of the snow. Probably 6 to 12 inches for Alta, Snowbird, uh, big, big big cottonwood, and then less every, everywhere else. So that's the 1026 scenario. And then that brushes the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Then we look to the next low. Here it comes. Moving south as a cold front. Moves into Colorado. There's the, the afternoon at 1028. And it does look like there's going to be a little bit of snow through the Wasatch with that, but less accumulation than what we're going to see on the 26th. And then it slides into Colorado, the door opens, all this cold air moves in, and I'm forecasting below zero mountain temperatures in Colorado um, by probably late on 1029 into 1030. So there's a lot of cold air coming in with this thing. And there it is by, um, that is 1029 in the morning. You can see snow for Denver as well as the mountain communities. And then by that night, it has moved out and it's a very cold night that night for most locations probably the coldest day of the season so far for many for many many locations um, I did look at to forecast snowfall and I updated these 
can see that I updated these these numbers this afternoon, and I'll do that most of the winter. So if you look at the blog in the morning, come back in the afternoons, and I'll have updated numbers normally if there's a large storm we're dealing with. Um, but let me take some of this full here so you can see what we're dealing with. Here's the jet on 1028. So really, this is the final, the third low pressure, um, the third cold front. You can see how far south the jet is digging. The trough, as we call it, the dip in the jet, opens the door, supports the low, coddles it, and uh, really helps to get things going. Drives a lot of orographic type of snowfall. It gives you an indicator of what we could see. It's early in the season, so this is obviously not a max out type of situation, but good for early season. Um, as far as totals, 1024 to 1027. Um, looking for probably um, 8 to 12 inches across the Tetons. A nice dumping of snow up in Montana. And notice I added Red Lodge a couple of days ago to the map. Um, so that's always on there now. Bridger Bowl, everybody gets you know 8 to 16 in, in the mountainous areas of Montana. Um, about 9 for Alta and Snowbird. And there's that little snow that brushes the central and northern mountains of Colorado. But the main impact to Colorado comes right here, 1028 to 1029. And you can see there's a little bit of leftover snow for the Wasatch as well. You could pick up another inch, two, maybe, maybe three in a couple of places, but one or two inches there. In Colorado, it's a 4 to 12-inch snow. Most of that's in the central to northern mountains. And these numbers have trended up just a little bit in the last 24 hours. And yeah, there'll probably be a little bit of snow even down through the foothills of Colorado with very light amounts for the front range. Uh, around Denver. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.